What is up my friends? Today on Real Chemistry, we are answering a really important question. What are amino acids? You may have heard of amino acids before. People will talk about how foods have all of the essential amino acids, for example, but what are they and why are they important? Well, they're just a group of small molecules. So here's an example of just one. There's actually 20 different versions that are important for our body. So that's just one version, and we're gonna go through later in this video each different part of that amino acid, what stays the same that makes them all amino acid, and what varies to give you 20 different versions. But what's cool about them is when you put a bunch of them together in the right order, you build really huge molecules that your body needs. This guy on the right is a protein. And so proteins are what are built from amino acids. So basic question to what our answer to what are amino acids is they're the building blocks of protein. This specific protein here is hemoglobin. You may have heard of it. Hemoglobin carries oxygen around your body in red blood cells. So really important. But there's tons of different proteins throughout our body that are essential to all of our different bodily functions. And so proteins are really important. How does your body know what amino acids to put in a protein? It turns out that's actually what our DNA codes for. Okay, how many amino acids do you think it takes to make hemoglobin? Go ahead, pause it, take a guess. Turns out 574 amino acids link up and we'll take a look at how they link, to make one protein in hemoglobin. Now, technically, there's four separate chains of amino acids in hemoglobin, but in any case, the total number of amino acids is 574. So if I link together 574 of these guys in the exact right order, then I get hemoglobin, okay? Again, that's what your DNA tells us to do. It tells us what exact amino acids we need to build a protein. Okay, let's continue exploring the relationship between amino acids and proteins. It's kind of like amino acids are a building block, a Lego block that you may or may not have played with as a kid. And remember, when you look at a Lego, you see on the top there are connectors that allow it to link up to another Lego. And on the bottom of this Lego, though they're not shown, you have the little holes that they connect to. Amino acids are really similar. So the left-hand side links up to the right-hand side, just like the top and bottoms of a Lego link up. And when we link those all together in a big, long stack, we get our protein, which you can think of kind of as like your completed Lego tower. You choose the right order, the right colors, the right shape, and bam, you get something really cool. Most of the time, if you just put random Legos together in a random order, you'd get nothing of interest. So proteins are really specific sequences of amino acids that give us really cool functions like carrying oxygen or breaking down toxins in our body, etc. Okay, so that's the relationship between an amino acid and a protein. Let's now talk about the different parts of an amino acid. First up, we got the N-terminus, okay, the N-terminus. And that's the amine group on the end of the amino acid. So we always, always, always have an NH2 on our amino acid, and that stays the same, and it's called the N-terminus. On the opposite side of our amino acid, we have the C-terminus. It's called, uh, it's, an, it's the side with the carboxyl group on it, or the one that ends in a carbon. And it also stays the same. We always have an N-terminus and a C-terminus. And it turns out, just like I referenced before, that's what link up to make a chain of amino acids. So the N-terminus and the C-terminus combine to make a chain of amino acids, just like our Lego stack. Okay? So those are two really important parts of the amino acid that can link up. Let's take a look at how they link up. Here you have one amino acid and a second amino acid. Okay, and they need to combine because if they're going to form a protein, you're going to need to do this 574 times, and they're going to need to form what's called a peptide bond, which is a link between two amino acids. What will happen is a water will be removed from the ends of these molecules. So an OH from the C terminus and an H from the N terminus go away as water, and then we're left with this peptide bond. And remember, the peptide bond is what links two amino acids. So this links two amino acids. So really important bond there that's made to link together our amino acids. Really cool what your body does, right? It needs to get these amino acids from somewhere. So you consume protein in your food. Your body breaks them down into all their constituent amino acids and then follows the instructions of your DNA to rebuild them in the right order to make the proteins you need. Pretty insane cool stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the part of the amino acid that varies, that changes, and that's the side chain. So you can see here that we have this NCC, and this is this backbone of this amino acid that always stays the same, the N-terminus and the C-terminus, which are linked together by this middle carbon here, technically called the alpha carbon. And hanging off of that alpha carbon is our side chain, okay? This side chain varies, and it's what makes... 20 different versions of amino acids. And so we'll look at a list of all of those amino acids in just a second. 
Uh, before we do that, let's just focus in on a different representation of amino acids that you might sometimes see. So this is important for you to be familiar with and to be able to recognize. Uh, notice in this case, we still have an N terminus and a C terminus. The main difference is that these ones are charged. So notice that one's positive and that one's negative. And sometimes on your list of amino acids, it will show these charged. And that's because at physiological pH, that is the pH that your body's at, the C and N terminuses are actually charged. So the N terminus turns out to gain a hydrogen and the C terminus turns out to lose a hydrogen. So you may see that pretty often. Here, the blue highlights the side chain. Okay, now that we're familiar with that sort of representation of our amino acids, we can start to look at how the side chains vary. Here are three different amino acids that you might put together to build a protein. Glycine, alanine, and valine. Notice that each of them have different side chains highlighted there in the blue. So glycine is a very boring side chain, just the hydrogen. Alanine is just a methyl group. And then valine has three carbons that sort of branch off of each other. So our side chains vary. Here's a list of all 20 amino acids. Super common for you to have to memorize these. Uh, in my classes, you don't. So you don't need to memorize these if you're in my class, but these are 20 different amino acids and you'll be given this reference sheet so that you can answer questions about amino acids. So you'll be able to look at this, okay? So you can see that there's 20 different versions and they're actually categorized by the properties of their side chain. So for example, everything in the bottom left corner here are polar side chains. Everything in the top left here are nonpolar side chains. And in the next video, we'll actually take a look at categorizing each of these different amino acids by their side chains. Okay, now let's do a little practice to make sure that we've understood what we've learned. What are the three parts of an amino acid? Well, they're the C-terminus. Remember that one is the carboxyl group. The N-terminus, that one has the amine group, which is not spelled T-U, it's spelled T-E. Okay, and then lastly, we have our side chain. Okay, so those are the three basic parts of an amino acid. What part of the amino acid varies? Well, that's the side chain. The side chain is the thing that can change, whereas the N-terminus and C-terminus are on every single amino acid. What biomolecules are made of a long chain of amino acid? Well, that's a protein. So proteins, remember, are what we get when we build up a really long chain of amino acids. What parts of the amino acid link to form the peptide bond. Okay, and that's the C-terminus and the N-terminus. They link up and connect each other to start to build a chain to make a protein.